Oh, I thought I was healed. I guess I've lost my healing. God, how come everything changed? How come you healed me and now I lost my healing? And yes, you can lose your healing. Let me say that to some people. Maybe somebody watching me. You can have the most dramatic healing and you can lose it all. I could have lost my healing. All of a sudden, my spiritual mom, she hit me. She said, that's for you. What's for me? What he's saying? What, zits? Oh, you know, I lost my healing. Yeah, you went back to Egypt. What do you expect? You went back to the world. What do you expect? Stay out of Egypt, stay out of the world, and you'll stay healed. Quite simple. He does his part, and they go home and make no changes in their life. And the sickness comes back, and they say, well, I lost my healing. No, you opened the door for the same thing to happen again. You've got to do more than just receive a miraculous touch. Oh, I lost my healing. No, you had not lost your healing. The devil trying to steal it from you. You know what? No symptoms. You are not a part of my body any longer. I take authority over you, and I believe I am healed. You've got to do more. I guess I've lost my healing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long, and sitting next to me is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever been healed by a faith healer and then felt all better, and then all of a sudden, you know, you go home, and two days later, you might have lost your healing? Well, today we're going to be talking about whether or not we can actually lose our healings, because that is a big thing today. If you, you go to a place uh, like a convention or something like that, a healing convention, you supposedly get healed and then you feel good for a little while, go home and then things kind of fall apart from there. Maybe they can start selling like healing trackers, like, you know, how you, if you lose your iPad, yeah. you can have one of those trackers. Yeah, there you go. Just yeah. an idea. Just an idea. Um, we're going to start off by talking about a Nigerian faith healer named Chris Oya Oyakalom. Got a very difficult very name. Very difficult to, to name. Yeah, very difficult name to pronounce. Born but, in uh, Nigeria, he is probably one of the top three richest faith mm -hmm. healers in Africa and around the world now. His net worth is about $50 million. Benny Hinn officiated at his daughter's wedding a few years back, mm -hmm. and he and Benny Hinn have started Love World USA. They started this in 2017, and that's a cable news streaming faith healing network. And this man is a complete grifter. He is a shyster extraordinaire. Bad news. So we're just going to show you a little bit of how he operates. Right now, right now. This woman suffered from a stroke, high blood pressure, and spiritual conditions. And that's it, she's free! Hallelujah! There's joy and rejoicing and praise and worshiping in this place as the man of God ministers with so much compassion and love scoliosis being corrected right now end of else's this little boy suffered from seizures man of god lays his hands on his head spiritual conditions rheumatoid arthritis I suffered from Down syndrome. But today, he has the mind of Christ. Today, the glory of God is overwhelming this child. Right now, in this moment, cells are regenerating. We're seeing a creative miracle right before our very eyes. The man of God touches him with so much compassion and love. He fixes his eyes on the man of God. Locked in a gaze, because today is his day. Today is his day. And that's it. He's free. Jesus is amazing. 
Okay, so what are your thoughts there, Robin? So Pastor Chris just healed a Down syndrome child. Healed. That, it was awful. It was terrible. That video it is a 32-minute long video of him just doing that, just walking along, blowing on people, touching people, slaying all these people, and they're all healed. Yeah. Now, we want to say this at the outset. We do believe God heals today. A lot of people will comment, well, so you got, you guys don't believe that God heals. Yes, we do believe God heals today. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've said this before on videos. Robin has said it. We pray when we know somebody's sick, we ask God to heal them. And mm -hmm. it, and we do believe that God does that. But we also believe that sometimes God chooses not to heal. I believe that's just biblical. Yes. So, Robin, anywhere in Scripture does it say that uh, we can lose our healing? So, I haven't found any place. Yeah, me either. And we don't have the apostles teaching it. We don't have Jesus when he is healing all of those people that he healed in the Gospels never, ever says, be careful now, you can lose your healing. Right. So in this next video, Pastor Chris is talking about some of the ways why we can lose our healing. One of those ways is through negative talking. The third reason people lose their healings is negative words, negative talking, wrong talking. So I, I'm, I'm going to explain that to you. And the gentleman, uh, a Kengaki from Cameroon, I told you, you benefit from some of the question, and, and that's what I'm getting into right now. So I said, the third reason is negative talking. I want to read to you from Proverbs chapter number 15, from verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Now this is so important. He says, a wholesome tongue, a healing tongue, is a tree of life. But it says a, a wholesome tongue. The word translated wholesome there is mape, and it means healing. A healing tongue is a tree of life. Then it says, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Perverseness is translated from a word that also means contrariness. It means being negative, speaking contrary words. When you say words that are contrary to your healing, contrary to... Um, God's word in your life, he says, is a breach in the spirit. So in the realm of the spirit, there's a breach, there's a wound, there's a destruction, which will sooner or later manifest itself in a physical body. So negative talking, contrary speaking, is one of the reasons people lose their healings. All right, so let's take a look at Proverbs 15, 4 really quickly, and we're going to just look at it in different translations. I'm going to use my text comparison tool in Lagos. All right, so here we are. This is the text comparison tool right here, and this is the ESV uh, translation. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. In ASB, a soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. New King James Version, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. The Lexham English Bibles, they, they translate this word gentleness just like the ESV does. Gentleness of tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it causes a break in the spirit. The NIV, the soothing tongue is like a tree of life. Um, now, you have Young's literal translation. Because it is a literal translation, it is going to l translate the word literally, a healed tongue. But the, notice, it's a healed tongue. This has nothing to do with you speaking negative words, Robin. Right. You know? Um, then you have the King James Version, a wholesome tongue, N-E-T, speech that heals, okay? Um, and then the Holman Christian Standard Bible, the tongue that heals. So I don't see anything in there at all about, uh, you know, negative words causing you to be able to lose your feeling. Healing. And I think when you look at that entire verse, you understand that um, what the writer is talking about there is a, a words that mm -hmm. bring spiritual refreshment, encouragement mm -hmm. to someone else, yeah. not words that bring physical healing. Exactly. And they have to do this, folks, because... There are so many countless people who are not really healed at their healing. They feel good for a little while because we're going to be talking about the placebo effect in a little bit. But they feel good for a little while, 
But then, you know, after that adrenaline right. wears off, after those endorphins uh, settle down, it's it's a different ball game. You know, you, you yes. feel pain again. So. so all of these faith healers have to have a reason why you're not holding on to the healing. And mm -hmm. that's what we're going over today is yes. all their different excuses, yes. none of which have to do with them. And again, it's all your fault. Yeah. And again, we believe God does heal today. Absolutely. Just we, we probably should say that like 20 times in this video, because a lot of people won't watch the whole video and they'll say, so you guys don't believe that God heals. So we might be saying that more than after a every few clip. times. <laughs> we believe God heals today. So we're going to now watch Kenneth Hagen explain that we didn't hold fast enough. But the point I'm going to get over to you is, you see, we're depending and looking for somebody else to deliver us. But we're not going to stay delivered unless we get the word in us. We have our part to play. You have your Bibles there tonight. I want you to notice a couple of verses from Revelation, the second chapter, and then the third chapter. You see, here Jesus appeared to John on the island, uh, you remember, uh, and, uh, and, and, and gave him a message for these six different churches that existed actually in Asia Minor. There on the Isle of Patmos, you remember, he appeared to him. And so among other things, in the second chapter, the 25th verse, but that which, you, that which you have already, hold fast till I come. That which you have, hold fast till I come. Now, in the third chapter of Revelation, that was a message to one of the churches. Here's a similar message to another one of the churches. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Now, notice, in both instances, to these churches that actually existed in Asia Minor at this time, Jesus had a similar statement for them. Hold fast that which thou hast. Now why? That's your, your responsibility. Why would you need to hold fast? Because there's an enemy that's arrayed against you. And that he'll endeavor to rob you. Amen. Praise God. But victory is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, when it comes to healing, Dad Nelson said, P.C. Nelson said, more people lose their healing over a counterattack than any other thing. I'm going to talk to you tonight about how to stay healed. Glory to God, many people get healed, but they don't stay healed. The very next meeting that comes along, they're there to get healed again. That's not God's plan. That's not God's will. Amen. He wants you to stay fit. You've you got to hold fast to it. Okay, so... So I think we were talking... There's nothing wrong with holding fast mm -mm. to God's word. No. That's amazing. We should be holding fast. Mm -hmm. So where does the problem come in? The problem comes in because he takes two words, hold fast, and he applies it to healing. He takes two words out of the book of Revelation. Why the book of, Re you know, you, you can take two words out of any book, but he chose the book of Revelation and he chose the two words, hold fast, which absolutely have nothing to do with healing whatsoever. And that's what they have to do. There has to, see, we were talking about this earlier. The evil thing about this is that it all falls on you. Everything falls on you. You have to be the one to hold on to your healing. So if you go to see, for example, oh, I don't know, Benny Hen. Let's just throw his name out there. You go see Benny Hen, for example. You go there and you feel better. And then, you know, a few weeks later, you're starting to feel bad again. And then you're, you're like, well, why is this happening? And then you find out. Well, because you didn't have enough faith or or you didn't hold fast or whatever the excuse is. But the point is, it all falls on you. Let's look at those verses in Revelation. Let's We're do just that. Gonna read them quickly for you. Revelation 2, 12 through 13. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write the words of him who has the sharp two edged sword. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. Revelation 3, 7 through 11. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write the words of the Holy One, the true one, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, 
who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Behold, I've set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. All right, Robin, I didn't see anything in either passages of Revelation that where hold fast, the words hold fast, the mean lose your healing. No, and and based on that idea, you could take any few words in the New mm-hmm. Testament and say, see that see, God's word tells you to do this. So if you're not doing that, you could lose your healing, like pray without ceasing. Mm-hmm. So I didn't pray without ceasing. Therefore I lost my healing. So that's what it boils down yeah. to. Yeah. And 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 again, they have to do this, folks, because of the um, numbers, just the countless numbers of people who are not healed, who are not really healed. And so they have to have some kind of way. And I do look, I do know there are exceptions to every rule. And I'm sure there are people who have gone to faith healing meetings who have genuinely, maybe they really have gotten healed. But if that's the case, God had mercy on you and you're the yes. exception, not the rule. So, I mean, most people are not healed at uh, when they go to these meetings. And I'm going to throw this out here now, Danny. If you got healed and you lost it, isn't that questioning God's mm-hmm. ability to heal us it certainly is and so they're blaming it on us but they never say well i guess god just didn't do it right yeah yeah and also we were talking earlier as well and the fault lies with who does the fault actually lie with not god not you with the lying faith healer yes absolutely all right so another reason they use that you could lose your healing is that you didn't get into your Bible. And this is Sean, is it Pinder? I think it's Pinder. I've never actually, um, I I don't know who this guy is, but uh, we do have a clip of Sean. Jesus teaches you right here in the Bible, you can lose your healing. If you don't keep up your responsibility and get into the Bible and build a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen here, in John chapter five, Jesus healed this man by the pool of Bethesda. Jesus went looking for this man. And you know what Jesus told this man? John chapter 5 verse 14. Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come on you. I wondered why in, in this same story in John 5. There was a multitude of sick folks. Jesus bypassed all of them sick people and only healed one man. You know, I always, God always, I'm like, wait a minute, Lord, there's a multitude of sick people. Are you just going to heal one person? You see, he knows all things. He knows all things. Jesus probably knew if I heal these people, they're going to end up worse because them demons going to come back with backup and reinforcement because this person it's not going to do right. Okay, so do you see how the, the, just the ridiculous excuses these people have to make? Jesus probably knew that those people that he didn't heal at the Pool of Bethesda were going to go back and, and they're going to be worse if I heal them. So I know this guy right here, this man right here isn't, so I'm going to heal him. But I better warn him, you know, unless he, you know, something worse comes upon him. One of the things he says in this clip, Danny, is so you you can lose your healing if you don't get into your Bible and stay in your relationship with Jesus. So that brings up a question. Does that mean that non-believers never get healed? Right. Exactly. And then you think of the lepers, the Mm -hmm. 10 lepers. Yep. Absolutely. Who did not come back, nine of which did not come back to thank Jesus, but went on and were healed. Mm -hmm. Um, In that verse, uh, John 15. 
5.14, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you are well, sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. In that entire story, that man didn't even know Mm -mm. that it was Jesus that healed him. That's right. If you look at that passage in its context, he had no idea that it was Jesus who healed him. So, you know, it's not the person's, it's not necessarily always the person's faith, you know, that, you know, and, and by the way, what is the faith in? Is the faith in the healing itself or is the faith, the object of the faith, right. Christ? And that's that's right. another thing to uh, to look at as well. Because we do know a lot of verses in the Bible talk about your faith has healed you. Mm-hmm. He had faith. So there is faith there, but you're right. It's not faith that I'll be healed. It's faith in God. Yes. And these people are not. So so think about this for a minute. They're saying you can lose yourself or not lose yourself. You can lose your healing if you don't have enough faith. That's another one of them. So they're putting faith in faith rather than faith in God. Their object of their faith is not in Christ. It's in faith. And that is a huge problem because nowhere are we told to put our faith in our faith. Our, the object of the faith of our faith is Christ. That is the object of our faith. Yes. And speaking so much about faith, Kenneth Copeland goes on to talk about how we lost our healing because we didn't have faith. You mean that you can lose your healing? Well, yeah. I was um, back in the days that I was there at Oral Roberts University, and some people came to me. And, and one very, very precious people now, you have to understand that. And um, she said, Brother Copeland, we need to pray. I said, okay, about what? But the Lord's taken his hand off of Brother Roberts. What? I said, well, where did you get that? They said, well, we went to interview some of the people that, that were miraculously healed. And we went to, to interview them and, and, and they're not healed anymore. I said, oh, I believe I haven't, I, I believe I can help you. <laughs> oh, can you, Brother Copeland? I said, did, he, did old Roberts heal him? Uh, no. Well then, <laughs> and she began to see, well, yeah, it wasn't his anointing that was lost. They lost it. They lost it. And the Lord gave me a word for her right at that moment. And it always pays to look inward. And, and it just came up. The same lack of faith and unbelief that put that dear sister in pain in the first place came back. Well, why? Well, that's easy. She didn't get in the Word and keep that healing and resist the devil when he tried to come back. She just, that symptom came. She said, well, you know, I mean, I didn't even have to meet the woman to know what she said some form or another, she, she said, well, I thought I was healed. I guess it wasn't. Well, it wasn't it had anything to do with Oral Roberts anointing. It had to do with her lack of knowledge of the Word and how to keep it. So according to Kenneth Copeland, if you don't get in the Word, you're going to lose your healing. And we talked about faith in faith just a moment ago, which makes sense in the Word of Faith movement, since Word of Faith teachers and followers and all those who are in the movement believe that faith is a force. It's a tangible kind of force force, and that God himself has to use faith in order to do anything. So, so it's almost like you have to have the power. Yeah. You, yeah. Another way we can lose our healing is because the enemy has challenged it. I didn't know it was going to be a healing service, but I was sure glad it was. So I go forward and He lays his hand on me, prays for me. I feel heat in my arm. He says, can you move your arm? I start moving my arm. No pain. I can windmill it. I can do anything with it. So um, I'm getting ready to to go back to my seat. I'm so excited. 
and he says, uh, young man, I want to say something to you before you go, before you go back to sit down. He said, you know, you can lose your healing. And um, he said, so here's what you want to do. You don't want to lose your healing. And he said, the enemy will challenge what God has done. And the way to work is you might try to lift something or you might have a moment when that pain feels like it's going to return. Here's what you do. In that moment, you thank Jesus that he's healed you and you rebuke the enemy for trying to challenge it. So, you know, I'm like, okay. So I go home and we're having a Sunday dinner and, you know, at our house, you know, a big family and always invited people over. And, and my mom asked me to go get some milk and we lived at a dairy farm. And so we drank 25 gallons of milk a week. <laughs> I mean, you got cows, why not? And, you know, if it's not pasteurized or homogenized, you're not going to put on weight with that. You can drink it all you want. We, we never drank water. We never drank anything but milk. We had milk with everything, and, and it was wonderful, the cream and the whole milk, all that. So anyway, they had two refrigerators downstairs, and they had those old glass milk jars that were really huge and had them, you know, and so my mom's like, go down and get one. So I go down, and, and I'm going to pick one up with my arm because I'm going to test this thing out. I'm going to be like, come on. So I go to pick it up, and all of a sudden, pain shoots up my, my arm, and I'm like, wow, it took my breath away. I can remember it. Right away, I remembered what the evangelist said. I said, Lord, I know you've healed me, Jesus, and right now I rebuke the enemy, and I will not let him steal my healing. You know what I did? I picked up that jug. I carried it upstairs. I was fine. I went, to the, I went to the job site. I kept my job all summer. Listen, I'm just telling you, that is, that is something that is true. And a wise Christian will understand that. Some of you, what has happened in the week of power, you just need to, you just need to say, Jesus has healed me. If he's healed you, he's healed you, right? So uh, I encourage you to be careful that way. Okay, Robin. Um, so that was Pastor John Lindell and the, the story, you know, that he's telling there is when he was at a, a faith healer, a, a popular, I don't know if it was a popular faith healer, but he was at a, he was at a, a healing meeting and his, his arm got healed, but he's also the guy that had, um, I guess Bill Johnson, if I remember correctly, Bill Johnson was at his church and some nurse was there that had her toes had been amputated. And um, when, you know, so so they were cut off, supposedly, and there was this creative miracle that took place there and the toes uh, grew back. And there's just been of this great big <laughs> <laughs> and there's just been this great big controversy. Uh, there, there's she the lady who would not show her grown toes. Yeah, she wouldn't take that. her shoes off or something like that. Yeah, th th there was a big. We'll write just, up about this and we'll also just take her word for it yeah there you go oh my so you have to rebuke the enemy because you did receive the healing and he's trying to make you think you didn't receive the healing exactly that's yeah. about there it. there you go um and, and again folks nothing okay so if this was if this was true if all of this was true robin wouldn't jesus have warned the people that he healed be careful unless you lose your healing like a doctor who gives you him uh your list of instructions after he's leaving mm -hmm. after you're when you're leaving mm -hmm. he's like okay make sure you rest make sure you take your medicine call me if this happens like jesus would hand instructions mm -hmm. to everyone and say okay stay in the word don't believe satan's lie and if you think you've lost it just give me a call yeah it just it's it's absolutely it just it's awful and so you also would have that instruction in the epistles wouldn't you yes. wouldn't you have paul or peter or james or someone tell and warn people that hey listen make sure that you don't do these certain things or you're going to end up losing this great miracle that god has done for you and then you think of um Jesus performing all of those healings and the apostles performing all of those healings. What kind of testimony would that be to God or to the, the messiahship of Jesus if some of those people lost their healing afterwards? I would right. think fraud. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's just so it's just so ridiculous. And and I'm not mocking people who have fallen for this. We're doing this video to warn and hopefully someone that 
is caught in this kind of teaching will say, wait a minute, you're right. I, 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 let me go through the mm-hmm. scriptures and let me just look at these these different healings and, and see whether or not these passages that these pastors use match up with this or not. So it's just that, that's why we're doing this video. Uh, Mario Murillo says that you believed a lie. Now, it isn't that you lost your healing. It's that you allowed a lie to take root in your soul. That's exactly what happened. Now, I've seen progressive healings, and I've seen people that have come back to me and said, Mar, I don't know why this all came back on me. You had a word of knowledge. You told me this and that and the other, and it came back. And I said, you have to understand what was going on at that moment. So let me ask you one or two questions. When I told you that you were in a car accident five years ago, was that true? They go, yes. When I tell you the place in your body that hurt, was that true? Yes. And when we prayed together and agreed in the name of Christ that a man had received the word, an unworthy man, nonetheless, he had received the word, did your sickness leave? Yes, I was completely well. And I said, then what happened? Well, nine months later, I began to feel things and I got afraid and I assumed that I was never healed in the first place. And I'll tell you when it really gets bad is when a pastor comes into agreement with them. They're in a meeting and say, you know, I uh, received a miracle, but I want you to pray for me because it came back. And at that moment, the pastor should say, we're not going to pray for that. You got something real. So let's now take the word of God, take our position, rightfully so, as believers, and enforce what we know to be the truth. And watch, innumerable testimonies I've received is, I fought it, I took my stand, and all those symptoms went away, and I'm completely well. Okay, Robin, so according to Mario, you allowed a lie to take root in your soul, and that's why you lost your healing. So there's there's so many ways that you can lose your healing. Again, making it depend upon you. You and it's a burden. You blew it. Yeah, like, you did that wrong. You did that wrong. You did that wrong. That's why you're not fully healed. And we 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 said this in the last video too. But Jesus does not want to place a burden on you. He wants to lift the burdens. Come unto mm-hmm. me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's what Christ wants to do. He doesn't want to burden you with all of these things that you're going to be scared to death of. Yeah. He wants to release that from you. He wants to take your burdens from you. And that's this is this is adding burdens. Speaking of adding burdens, uh, Andrew Womack talking about how we are influenced by the unbelief of others. You know, many of the people that I've heard from these healing ministries Uh, Catherine Kuhlman was one that I used to be associated with a long time ago. And Catherine Kuhlman made this statement that 90% of the people who had verifiable healings in her ministry lost those healings over a three or four year period of time. And it's because of this principle right here. The unbelief of other people can hinder things. And Jesus told a man in the fifth chapter of the book of John, he says, go and sin no more lest something worse come upon you. That was a man who was lame and was healed from being lame. And he associated... Uh, sickness and disease with sin and this man going back into that position of sin. And so, yes, you can lose your healing. Actually, it's not probably right to say lose your healing, but you quit believing. You get influenced by the unbelief of other people and all of a sudden you go back into sickness instead of staying in health. It's not that you lost it. It's that you quit believing. You turned off the power and immediately that thing begins to come back on you. And, you know, there's a good Benny Hinn quote, and I can't find it right now. He's like, I don't understand why everyone is getting healed. But two to three weeks later, oh, he says, when a man can come out of a wheelchair at my meeting, and then three weeks later, he's back in it. Yeah, there's this thing called the placebo effect. And there's a lot of really good illustrations on the placebo effect and how the body actually has so much capability of self-healing. You it's know? amazing. God it's has amazing. just made the body just incredible. Yeah. Um, we have a book 
by William Nolan called Healing, A Doctor in Search of a Miracle. And I think he wrote this book after, especially after Catherine Kuhlman. He's got one full section on Catherine Kuhlman's ministries. Um, And he gives a couple examples of how amazing the body is. Uh, One of those examples is they did a study where the, the a number of people were blindfolded and they were told on your left arm, we are going to place a poisonous leaf and you are going to get a rash and their body developed a rash. But the leaf wasn't poisonous. It was a innocuous mm-hmm. leaf. And then they took a poisonous leaf on the right arm and they said on your right arm, you're going to get just a plain old leaf. Nothing's going to happen. It's not allergenic, nothing. And they were all fine. And it was a poisonous leaf. So our body has so much ability to react to the stimulus around it and what it believes. Another example was the, uh, and you can talk about this, Robin, was the shots that was given during, what was it, the Civil War? During World War II. World War II. World War II. Where uh, one medical camp ran out of morphine, and one of the nurses just went around gave, giving saline shots, telling the soldiers that they were receiving morphine, and they did get relief just knowing that their body had received a medicine to help them. So, you know, those kinds of things happen even in uh, healing meetings. Um, And so a a lot of the problem is that just that very thing, this idea that that this placebo effect thing that's going on. So very true. Um, We're going to go on to Catherine Crick, who says that Satan is tricking you. I speak complete healing to you now in Jesus name. No more pain in any of your body now, in your back or your foot. May you not even need a cane. I speak abundant health to you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You are healed. And from today, declare I am healed. Because the devil is angry, but he doesn't have power. But he he tries to be sneaky and, and like try to think that you lost your healing. So if ever he comes back again, like if ever there's a lie of pain ever kind of thing, ever, what you need to do is say, I am healed. Yes, I am. You keep declaring this healing is yours to stay. I declare in Jesus name. Amen. All right. And we've done a video on Catherine Kirk before and just how awful that false prophetess is. That sneaky satan who has no power oh man and 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 that's the thing too you know these these guys they they make satan almost on equal plane with god like god has to i don't know um get around satan sneak behind satan's back so that you know satan can't get one over on him or something Mm. you know it's just like crazy we have a quote from uh, the great Bible study.com and on deliverance ministries. And it says it is not uncommon for demons to come up to somebody and replicate the pain that feels just like what they experienced before their healing. They do this so that you will doubt your healing and lose your faith. Once they have you walking in doubt and fear, then they have the ability to bother you with continued pain. Thus your problem returns and your healing appears to be lost. In reality, the healing isn't lost at all. They just need to stand up for what is rightfully theirs and rebuke the demons that are behind the pain or sickness. So I think that's what we saw Catherine Crick doing. Yeah. And that is so dangerous because um, there are people who will stop taking medication because a faith healer tells them that they are healed. I think about the 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 woman that uh, I, I believe she drowned in the bathtub um, after a Mar Cirillo, sometime after a Mar Cirillo meeting. Um, and, you know, it, it's it, I think of um, like even the the older faith healers, the, the like John Alexander Dowie and and uh, even the Bosworth brothers um, mm-hmm. who have had people die because, you know, they, they claimed that they were healed, but they weren't healed. So it's just the the damage that this kind of teaching has done is mm-hmm. just it's it's horrible. And bringing up some memories of Agnes Sanford Mm -hmm. saying that, you know, I didn't I didn't feel the physical healing, but I knew my inner person was healed and that it was just a matter of time before that kind of emanated out to the outer shell. Yeah. And speaking of inner healing, 
Yeah, we have Randy Clark talking about that you might not be healed because you didn't heal the root problem. Awesome. Can you tell me uh, what your thoughts are concerning once healed and keeping your healing? So often I hear that you can lose your healing. This is from Joe Wynn on Facebook. Okay, that's a good question, Joe. You can lose your healing, but God doesn't want you to lose your healing. If you lose your healing, it's, it's uh, several reasons for that. Number one, if it wasn't a real healing, and if you're only excited and it was placebo effect, uh, it won't last very long, just a few hours or uh, maybe a day or so, a max. Um, and, and, and so it wasn't a genuine healing. And there is some of that. Uh, I don't think that's very often, though. Um, another reason is that the person prayed for you to be healed and, and you were healed and the condition was healed, but the root that was causing that condition wasn't discovered and that wasn't dealt with. And if it is a psychosomatic illness, if you're not dealing with the cause of the psychosomatic illness, even though the, the, there was a healing, the cause that started that sickness will start working again and over time, you will develop that same problem. It wasn't that you lost your healing, your healing was there, it's that the sickness rooted in uh, thoughts and emotions that weren't uh, dealt with in a proper way uh, in, in inner healing uh, caused that sickness to uh, grow again. If you think of it as a dandelion, you cut off the dandelion, but the root's still there, it will grow back another dandelion. Another reason. If your lifestyle is what caused your sickness and you get a complete healing, but you don't change the lifestyle that caused it, the lifestyle that caused it is still there to cause it again. All right, so he says three things there that uh, can cause you to lose your healing. We're going to focus on the middle one there. The first one was the placebo effect. We talked about that. The third one was uh, the lifestyle. And what were we talking about earlier about lifestyle? Um, right. It. I mean, it does make sense mm -hmm. if... If God is gracious enough to heal me of, let's say, lung cancer, and, and I was a smoker, and I continue to smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to probably get that lung cancer. So we would have responsibilities to take care of yeah. ourselves. But the, the, the middle one is what we're going to focus on, and that's the inner healing. So God, where where in Scripture, first of all, we, we always go back to Scripture because that's the most important thing. Where in Scripture is it, do, do the apostles or Jesus do inner healing on anyone? I I think about Peter Peter and um, uh, Peter and John. I believe yeah. When they walked into the temple in Acts chapter I think uh, three, uh, they walk into the temple. The man is lame. Uh, he Peter looks down and says, "Look at me." And the guy thinks he's going to get some money or something from him. He was a beggar. And Peter says, silver and gold, I have not. But what I do have, I give you rise and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. He gets up and walks. I mean, there was no, uh, you know, inner healing. Well, let's see, this, this, this man may not be able to walk because deep down there's rooted in his past. There were these something issues happened. and all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and another thing you think of is that. If God, and they will all say, all the faith healers will say, well, I'm not really healing. God is healing mm -hmm. through me. You know, Oral Roberts and his tingling hand mm -hmm. and how many of them have that. Um, so if God is healing you through me, does God not know that there's a root issue there? And can God not heal that if you're coming to me for healing? Yeah. Yeah, he may not know it. Um, and, and that's true because, uh, and, and, and I'm going to, put a link to a really good video that was put out by Chris Roseboro. If you haven't seen it yet on open theism, a lot of the NAR folks, they actually have uh, this idea that God doesn't really know the future. So I'm going to put a link to that in there and maybe that's what they think, but I can tell you this much, Robin, um, you know, God knows all things and that's very clear. And he would know what the, I, the whole, that's the whole point. thing is just, again, it's just a bunch of excuses. When that's all it is. start to really think about mm -hmm. their excuses, yeah. you see how, how much of an excuse it really is. Mm. Uh, and we have Oral Roberts talking about why he lost your healing. Christ once said, wilt thou be made whole? It is not merely a laying of hand upon a sick body. 
and expecting a miracle to, to happen to that body, sometimes it does happen. But do you know some of those people lose their healing? They don't keep it because the inner man did not get healed. The will was not exercised. It was a miracle through the prayer of faith, and the person could not hold on to it. But if you get your whole self healed, if the inner man and the outer man is healed, you can keep that healing. It'll last. Now, the man is lying here, and Jesus speaks to him. What do you think that he says? He talks about sin. He reads his heart. He knows the man's heart now has recognized the presence of God. And in the presence of God, he knows he's in sin. What about this healing that we're talking about? It isn't merely physical. As I said, it deals with the inner man, and in the inner man is where sin starts. In the will is where sin is, is, uh, is carried out. The will operates with sin. Jesus Christ said, thy sins are forgiven thee. But he did not stop there. After he forgave his sins, then he began, he began to heal his whole man. This leads me to say that being converted by Jesus Christ, being forgiven of sin, is not enough. Jesus Christ wants the whole man healed. Not only the soul, he wants the whole man healed. So that last comment that Oral Roberts makes, being forgiven is not enough. Jesus wants the whole man healed. Just that first phrase, being forgiven is not enough. Now, there's a lot wrong with that clip. I mean, his whole view of sin is off, and we could talk about that. But just being forgiven is not enough. Folks, in order for someone to be saved, in order for someone to be forgiven, they have to realize how that they are a sinner. The law has to be preached to them. They have The law has to cut to the heart. They have to know their sin. And then, once the law comes in, then the good news of Christ's forgiveness mm. is far sweeter. And so, the fact that a person who is struggling, especially who is struggling with sin, and just constantly, you know, under conviction all the time, or just guilty all the time, when they hear the good news that Christ bled and died and rose again for them, that... that the gospel is an objective fact that it happened for them. Man, it just, it's like drinking water. It's like drinking cold water. Tell that to somebody who's really been forgiven. It just, that bothers me so bad. Forgiveness is, forgiveness of sin is not enough. That is awful. So then let's look at what the Bible says about healing. Mm -hmm. Why did Christ heal people? Well, he did have compassion on people. We know that. We can look mm -hmm. in the scriptures. He had compassion. He yes. loved people. But he was also uh, fulfilling the law for us in our place. He was doing everything that he was doing for us because the Bible uh, says that we have to be perfect. We, we are, Jesus says, unless your righteousness surpasses, the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. Christ was fulfilling the law from start to finish, from his birth to death for us. So that's one thing he was doing. Another thing is that he was showing uh, his disciples especially that he was their Messiah, that he was the fulfillment of all of those Old Testament prophecies. Um, yeah, so... Right, I have that verse with John the Baptist. Yes. So why don't we go there? Okay. John 7, 20 through 23. And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the one who has come or shall we look for another? In that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. And he answered them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. It's obvious that the Jews were looking for their Messiah, 
And you can see that in John's question. Are you the one who is to come or should we expect another? They were looking for their Messiah. Jesus was the fulfillment of all of those Old Testament prophecies. And there's a number of um, examples where they say actually in Matthew 12, 15 through 20, we won't read it, but Jesus healed. And then it says, and this was done to fulfill mm -hmm. what was written in Isaiah. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, if you start in chapter one of Matthew and go all the way through chapter 28 of Matthew, Matthew was writing specifically to the Jews. That's mm -hmm. who he was writing to. So he was putting in there, this was to fulfill the word of this prophet. This was to fulfill the word of that prophet. It's all throughout the book of Matthew. So, right. I mean, that, so that's the purpose. Yes, Jesus had compassion. He loved people. He, he you know, you look at the feeding of the 5,000. He tells his disciples, you know, um, I, I'm, I have compassion on these people because they've been without food uh, for this many days. And if I send them on their way, they're going to faint on the way to go get food. So you, you see the compassion of Christ, but that's not just the only reason why he healed people. There were there, there was, a, you know, a whole bigger, you know, reason. Yeah. And then he hands off that ability to his disciples. Mm hmm. Um, in Matthew 10, and he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. Yeah. So they went out carrying the message, the good news mm -hmm. and healing people. Yes. And Jesus is the one who gave them that authority. And it was them that he gave the authority to. Now, there's another reason why. Uh, all you know, th th there was healing in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The apostles themselves were given the authority uh, to be the um, foundation of the New Testament church. And in order to show that they were genuine apostles, Christ had given them the power to heal and the power to um, give those gifts, those spiritual gifts to others through the right. laying on of hands right to pass them along mm -hmm. so that's why the apostles were able to heal and those that the apostles gave that ability to were yes. able to heal also yes and if you look at one great example of this is um acts chapter 8 where philip um the evangelist uh is preaching in samaria and he, you know, he, he brings the gospel and they all believe, right? And they're baptized. But the Holy Spirit hasn't mm -hmm. been given yet. So does Philip lay his hands on these people and give the Holy Spirit to them? No. He calls the apostles down and they come. And they distribute the Holy Spirit to the people there in Samaria. And you see this kind of thing throughout. It's the apostles who are doing the, who are distributing the gifts. Not every Christian has the power to, to do that. It was the New Testament apostles. Right. And that, that was to show their apostolic authority. I'm sorry. Exactly. And then the apostles um, did not or could not heal everyone. Right. Right. So Paul telling Timothy to take a little wine because he had stomach issues. Yeah. Why didn't he heal him? Um, 2 Timothy 4.20, Erastus remained at Corinth, and I left Trophimus, who was ill, at Miletus. So why didn't the Apostle Paul heal Trophimus? I mean, so, so we can see that, it, you know, not every single person is healed in the New Testament, um, and so this, this whole idea, and again, this is so important. These guys, these teachers, they will say, Jesus Christ, they'll, they'll quote this verse, Jesus Christ uh, remains the same today, yesterday, and forever. That's, that's a big one they, they, they love to quote. Mm -hmm. And yet in the scriptures, they'll take, there, there's nothing, nothing that specifically says, if you don't do this, this, or this, or if you lack faith, you are going to lose your healing. Jesus never warned anybody about that. The apostles never did said anything to any of the people. They healed an axe or did miracles for an axe. And there's no teaching in any of the epistles from any of the apostles anywhere that even implies that. So isolated verses have to be taken out of context to make their case. 
And so if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and nothing is mentioned in Scripture, what, did he change and all of a sudden come and say, oh, wait, wait a minute, I forgot to put this in Scripture. Uh, unless, you know, you, you, you do these certain things or you meet this certain criteria, you're going to lose your healing. Um, there's a good passage in James on what we are to do for healing and it's james 5 13 through 16 is anyone among you suffering let him pray is anyone cheerful let him sing praise is anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So we're saying it again. We believe in healing. We pray for people who are sick. We have people write us and e email us and send us messages asking us to pray for specific people in their family. We do. We believe mm -hmm. God heals. And, you know, and, and there's just, you know, no other way to say it. I don't what we don't believe is that these People like Benny Hinn and uh, John Lindell and Bill Johnson and Chris Fountain and any of these guys have power to heal or what they teach is biblical. So anyway, that I digress, but you get the point. <laughs> anyway, folks, listen, this teaching is unbiblical. I hope that if this has been helpful to you and you know somebody who has, you know, has been or is caught up in this, that this video will be encouraging to them. Take the burden off of them. That's what we want. Have that burden off of them. God does not want to burden you. He wants to lift those burdens. Thanks for watching.